what I would like to do today is continue uh, the Karna story. Last time I talk, spoke about the dialogue between Krishna and Karna, and Krishna was not able to convince Karna to leave the Kauravas and join the Pandava force. And that was an interesting dialogue. In this particular case, also a very interesting dialogue between Kunti and Karna, and I will also point out some of the dilemmas that, that, that are posed in this dialogue. Vidura goes to see Kunti and bemoans the forthcoming war. He says, O Kunti, though I have been besieged Duryodhana several times to meet with the Pandavas, he has rejected my pleas. Yudhishthira, along with his four brothers, is not for the war. Though he is very powerful, Yudhishthira is also very righteous and would like nothing better than to meet with Duryodhana and make peace. On the other hand, Duryodhana is in no mood for any talks. Pandava was fully expected to regain their half of the kingdom, but Duryodhana reneged on the, prom on the promise. This, is, this was highly unrighteous on his part. Hearing these words from Vidura, Kunti sighed with sorrow and said to herself, let there be scorn for those who promote war. For the sake of a kingdom, brothers are fighting against brothers. For the sake of a kingdom, is it right to destroy your own kith and kin? Is it better for my children to live humbly by refusing to fight? I have to resolve this within myself. It is better to die in poverty than to fight this war. I am so grief stricken. The cover of us are making me very fearful. Drona seems to be thinking of himself only. He will not side with the Pandavas, neither will Bhishma switch sides. Karna is deluded. Karna is also a very powerful soldier. All these is, are making me so afraid of the events that my heart is burning with grief. I will do the following, Kunti says. I myself will go to Karna and try to persuade him to abandon his hatred. If I tell him the true story of his birth, he will realize that he is the eldest of the Pandavas and will listen to me. She then goes to the banks of the Ganges River and hears the melodious voice of Karna chanting the Vedas. Karna was facing the morning sun and he was engaged in prayers. Kunti stood silently, standing in the shadow of Karna, made her wait a little bit bearable. Karna completed his prayers only after the sun moved towards the west. At that time, he saw the frail yet radiant Kunti. He bowed down to her, introduced himself by name and his family. With a soft voice, he said, Radha Yoham Madhiratihi, Karnaswam Abhivadaye, Prapta Kimartam Bhavati, Bruhikim Karavanite. Proper way of introducing himself. O Devi, salutations to you from Karna, the son of Adiratha and Radha. Notice how he introduced himself, not as Karna, but the proper way, the, the family lineage, then his name. Uh, brings me back to uh, my own experience many, many years, about 60 or 65 years ago. There's a very small village called Sampige, close to where I was born. And in that little village, there is a temple for Lord Srinivasa, which is our family deity. So I was there, an old man sitting there, and he saw me and said, Niviaru, who are you? I told him, I am Prasanna Kumar. He shook his head and said, no, 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 no. I asked you, who are you? I didn't know what he was talking about. Then he said, Yar Paiki, whose family are you from? Then I told him, I am the son of Kadabha Raghavan. Then he said, sit down. So he expe fully expected me to introduce myself first by telling who my parents are and then my name. And then I learned my lesson at that time.
notion of introducing oneself I think is no longer prevalent in many, many parts of India. Uh, you can see that when you go to the priest for the archana to your deity, the first thing the priest will ask you is your gotra, your family lineage. Then he will ask you your name. Then he will ask you for your nakshatra. And Kunti said, after Karna introduced himself, Kunti said, Karna, you are not the son of Radha. You are the son of Kunti. Adirata is not your father. You are not born in the fisherman's community. Please understand this, for I am speaking the truth. So Kunti tells him, you are not a Sutaputra. And Karna was always dogged in his whole life by the tag Sutaputra. Remember when I talked about the very first time Karna met with Arjuna, when they were all uh, showing off their skills, he was prevented from challenging Arjuna because of his birth. He was a Sutaputra. And Bhima then taunted him, you're a Sutaputra. Why don't you go drive a chariot? Why, what are you doing here? At that time, Duryodhana saw an opportunity. He saw an opportunity and then embraced Karna. Another instance is when Draupadi some, some Draupadi's wedding, uh, Swayamvara, all the people were there trying to overhand, and the challenge was to the bow and then shoot, which was in a revolving disc above, above overhead. A lot of people came and tried, and nobody could even lift the heavy bow. Karna then comes in, he lifts the bow effortlessly. Just at that time, he hears a voice. Naham varayami sutaha. Naham varayami sutaha. I will not marry a suta. I will not marry a suta. These were piercing words coming from Draupadi. Karna then went back to his seat. So this idea of suta putra was burnt in letters of fire on his heart. Every cell in his body was saying, Naham varayami suta. Naham varayami sutaha. So he was very angry, very resentful. That stuck with him. So Kunti tries to, when I was still a young girl, then Kunti recalls how Karna was born through the grace of sun god. And so she says, you are deluded in your association with Duryodhana and it is not right. Sages have said, Sister, father, teacher, and mother is the most righteous service. It is also said that the mother loves equally all her children, and the children should be a source of happiness for her. Vaishnapayana then tells Janamejaya, O oh, Janamejaya, just at that time, a voice was heard from the realm of the sun. It was indeed the voice of sun himself. There was compassion in that voice, it was a very pleasant voice. It would be difficult not to hear the words and follow the earth. He says, Karuna, your mother has indeed spoken the truth. Do as your mother says. Your well-being is well served by following his wise, her wise words. Janamejaya, Vaishampayana continues, despite the words of his mother and father, Karuna did not change his mind. He tells Kunti, O oh, noble Kshatriya woman, I have no faith in your words. Neither do I believe that I will benefit by following your advice. Mother, you have committed a great sin. You abandoned me as soon as I was born. Do you think that even a worst enemy would have done to me what you did? When I needed you the most, you chose to abandon me. I have not been following the samskaras as a Kshatriya all these years, and now you tell me that I am a Kshatriya. You have never acted like a mother to me. You have not done all the things that a mother does to a child. You never acted as a mother. Now you come and tell me, I am your mother and you are my son. Oh Kunti, I have no brotherly feelings towards the five Pandavas. 
what an opportune time have you chosen to tell me who I really am? If I should listen to you and join the forces with the Pandavas, the Kauravas have given me everything. How can I abandon them now? I have the unique opportunity to pay back to Duryodhana all the kindness that he has shown me. I cannot abandon him even if, even if it means death to me in the war. This shows his, his sense of loyalty, unshakable loyalty to Duryodhana. So Karna is all, always called a very generous person, a very loyal person, sometimes misguided. One grows up, Karna continues, one given by others, his needs from the nurturer. There may come a time when he has to protect the nurturer. At that time, if help is not rendered, he will be branded as an ingrate. Mother, I will not lie to you. I will fight your children and the, the Pandavas. I will do this because of my friendship with the Kauravas and the debt I owe to Duryodhana. I cannot abandon Duryodhana now. He has shown me great respect. I must help him in this time of need. Consequently, I will not abandon my principles. That brings you back to another episode of standing behind principles. Karna was known to be very generous. Indra, the Brahmin, and comes to meet Karna after his morning prayers. And then he, and then he asks him, oh Brahmin, who are you? What, what can I do for you? Indra says, I want your kavacha, that is his armor, body armor, and the kundala, which are the earrings that he was born with, invincible body armor and the earrings. And Karna had been warned the previous night by Surya in his dream that Indra will disguise himself as a Brahmin and come and ask for your body armor and the earrings. Do not give it to them. That will pose great harm to your own safety. So try to stall him, give him anything else, but do not give those things to him. But Karna does not want to follow his father's advice because he wants to make sure that he keeps his promise that he would help the Brahmins if they asked him for anything. So Karna tries to talk him out of it, but Indra disguises the Brahmin, insists. Indra makes sure that Karna had no scars in his body. His body was as beautiful as before except it was now vulnerable because the body armor had been taken away. Indra says, I am so astonished by your generosity and by the principles that you hold. Henceforth, you shall be, you shall be called Dhanashura Karna. Dhanashura means hero of all generous people, the greatest of them all. You will attain fame as Dhanashura. So ask me for anything. The Karna says, ask for certain armaments from Indra, including his Shakti Ayudha. Shakti Ayudha is the most powerful weapon that he had. Indra teaches him how to use the Shakti Ayudha by chanting the appropriate mantra. The Shakti Ayudha would gather the life and then it would be operable. But then he warns him, you can use it only once. Once you have discharged this arrow, you can never use it again. It will complete its uh, mission and then it will come back to me. So Karna's generosity was again, is again exemplified as Vyasa puts it. He is surely a, the master. And Karna continues, your meeting me should not be a complete waste. I will consider that I received the fruit of the war when I slay Arjuna. If I were to be killed by Arjuna, I will attain immortal fame. No matter what, you will be left with five children, Pancha Pandavas, Yudhishthira, Bhima, Nakula, Sahadeva, together with either Arjuna or myself. In any case, the five Pandavas will remain and never six Pandavas. There will never be six Pandavas, always five. Karna Sahav, Kunti Sahav, how Karna was unperturbed, overcome with emotion, 
she heard Karna with tears in her eyes and said, Oh Karna, there's nothing stronger than divine will. All the efforts of men cannot overrule the divine will. It may be as you said, let there be a war, let there be suffering if divine will is to hold. If so, nobody can stop the divine will. But the sad fact is the entire Kaurava race will be destroyed. May God bless you. May, not be, may you not be afflicted with any disease. May you live healthy. Anayam Swastitis too. And that being said, I'll now come to the end of Karna, and then I'll piece together from the birth to the death some of the highlights of Karna's life and the lessons that we have learned from Karna's life. Karna, as you know, had gone to Parashirama to get advanced training in the in our city. He, more than anything else, he wanted Brahmastra. Adrona would not teach him Brahmastra. So Karna went to Parashirama and he faked himself. He told him, I am a Brahmin. And then he, he, Karna knew he was a Sutta. He did not know he was a Kshatriya. So he told Parashirama, I am a Brahmin. Will you teach warfare? One day when he was laying down, resting his head on Karna's lap, an insect bore a hole through Karna's thighs and blood started flowing and Karna was in great pain. But since his teacher was resting his head on his thigh, he would not move, he would not flinch. But the blood started dripping down and woke uh, Parishrama. Parishrama gets up and says, you are not a Brahmin, so you have lied to me. And therefore, all the astras that I've given you will be useless when you want to use them the most because you will have to chant a particular mantra before you use the particular astra. At the time of need, you will forget that particular mantra. Therefore, the astra will be totally useless to you. Karna then pleads with him, please forgive me for I did things that I should not have done. Karna will, he will say, Karna will eventually achieve what, what he senses. Your goal is to attain fame, and you shall attain fame. Karna, you will name, your name will be remembered forever. You will be immortal. That was the one curse that Karna had, one strike against him. Then Karna leaves Parashiramas Hermitage and wanders about for some time. One day, while he was practicing his archery skills, something flashed by him, something flashed very fast by him. Instinctively, Karna took an arrow and shot a cow, and the cow was dead. At that time, a Brahmin comes in, he looks at the cow, he was very angry, he looks at Karna, look what you have done. You have killed an innocent cow, a harmless cow. I shall curse you. He curses him. Karna, he says, your dearest enemy, your chariot wheel will sink and then you will be helpless, as helpless as this innocent cow. This is the second curse that Karna had, one from Parashurama and one from the Brahmin, two curses that he had to overcome. So when Karna's chariot wheel gets stuck in a rut, as it was ordained, he gets exasperated and gets down from his chariot to lift the wheel out of the rut. He begins to blame dharma. I have lived a dharmic life to dharma rakshati rakshitaha. Dharma protects those who protect dharma. Not true. Dharma has abandoned me, even though I have tried to follow dharma to the best of my ability. So he pleads with Arjuna. <coughs> to suspend his arrows until he is able to break the chariot loose from the rut and put it on a firmer ground. It does not behoove a great warrior like you, Arjuna, to take advantage of the helpless situation that I am in. People with evil mind 
recite dharma when they are in difficulty. They never attribute their circumstances to the result of their own actions, evil actions. So don't blame dharma, blame your own evil actions. And Krishna tells him, you betrayed Draupadi by calling her a slut when she was free, when she was being forcefully disrobed by Dushyasana. You remember that, don't you? Where was your dharma then? Te dharma When Shakuni was cheating Yudhishthira, where was your dharma? You failed to persuade Duryodhana to give half the kingdom to the Pandavas, even though they were entitled to it. You actually supported Duryodhana's illegal and immoral act. Where was your dharma then? Are you at your urging Duryodhana poisoned Bhima and drowned him in a river? Where was your dharma then? You were complicit in the scheme to burn down the Pandavas in the wax palace. Where was your dharma then? Where was your dharma when unharmed Abhimanyu was killed? Your actions in the past do not establish that we are adhered to dharma. There is no escaping that you pay a price for your evil acts. He then tells Arjuna, Arjuna, using this Divyastra, dispatch Karna now, do not waste. If you miss this opportunity to kill Karna, you will never get a second chance to do it now. Arjuna follows Krishna's words and behaves Karna using the Divyastra named Anjalika. <clears throat> That's how Karna dies at the hands of Arjuna, when he was actually unarmed and stuck in the mud. Several things came to my mind as I was going through Karna's life. The first thought that came to my mind was the following. When Adhirata and Radha adopted him, should they have told him at some point in his life that he was an adopted son? I don't know. Supposing they didn't tell him, and Arjuna, when he was a young boy, finds out, uh, Karna finds out from somebody else that he's an adopted son. How would Karna feel? What would, he, what would be his emotional reaction? The answer doesn't allude to all of that. These were the questions that came to my mind. The parents, couple who adopt a child, and is the enormous burden on their shoulders. Should they tell the child that he or she is adopted? And if so, when should they tell the, tell the child? How should they tell the child? What is the emotional toll? And Vyasa does not allude to any of those things. The first time Karana found out that he was the adopted son was Krishna tells him. By that time, of course, Karana had grown into an adult and he had been with the uh, Kauravas all the time. And then, Karna sought the acceptance of his mastery in archery. He didn't get it. He had all the qualifications, all the qualifications, yet he was haunted by the label Sotaputra, always haunted by the label Sotaputra. This left a wound on his mind that turned from resent resentment to anger. This attitude of prevails even today. When people in power say, yeah, you're well qualified, you've gone to Harvard, you've gone to Yale and everything else, but this but is the one that is the most hurtful. This is particularly hurled at underrepresented minorities even now. Karna felt that very keenly. He could never overcome that wound of being called a Sotaputra, even though he had all the qualities. Not a good tactician, in my opinion. When the wheels of his chariot got stuck in the rut, why didn't he ask his chariot Rishalya to get down and free the chariot from the rut? Supposing a CEO is being chauffeured around to his job and had a flat tire, do you expect the CEO to get down and change the tire? Why did not Karna asked Shalya to get down and remove the chariot's wheels from the rut. 
where he could be standing with his bow and arrow and uh, shield and then keep fighting until the wheels were free. That didn't happen. Karna could have done that, but he didn't do it. Maybe the fate intervened because Karna was destined uh, to be there lifting the chariot because the curse the Brahmin had put on him. It seems to me that he could have done it, but he didn't do it. Karna generously was blind to his own welfare. He gave the invincible body armor and the studs to Indra, even if it posed a grave threat to his own life. And the question is, to generosity extend to such limits as to put yourself in great danger? I don't know the answer. Karna had the right definition of what a mother is. This is where Karna excels. Merely giving birth is not sufficient to qualify the title of a mother. Karna makes it very, very clear to him what the word mother represents. I like that, his definition of a mother very much. Karna was very stubborn. He would not listen to Shalya's advice on many occasions. Shalya would tell him, you're not aiming the arrow properly. Why don't you re-aim it? Karna would look back and tell to Shalya, once when I've taken an aim, I shall never, ever re-aim it again. And that was his downfall. See, during the war with Arjuna, Karna picks up the Sarpastra and then aims that at Arjuna. Sarpastra would kill anything that came in front of it. Sensing that the Sarpastra was coming, Krishna presses the chariot to Arjuna's neck. Instead, he takes away his helmet, which is the Kirita. Then the Sarpastra returns back to its owner. Arjuna, that's what Krishna then helps Arjuna from death by depressing the chariot. So his Kirita was gone. Arjuna is also called Kiriti. Arjuna has 12 names, you know. Arjuna, Palguna, Partha, Kiriti, Shweta, Vahana, Bibatsu, Vijaya, Krishna, Savya, Sachi, Dhananjaya, the 12 names of Arjuna. Arjuna himself said these to Uttara long time ago in Mahabharata. So his Kirita was gone. That's how Krishna saves Arjuna's life. If only Karna had listened to Shalya's advice, he might have aimed the Sarpastra properly, but he didn't. <coughs> so Parishanama and, and, and the Brahmin finally sealed his fate. So I like Karna from many, many points of view. Uh, he has taught us many valuable lessons. The, meaning of generosity, the meaning of being loyal. And also he has taught us that very often we crave for certain fame, we crave for certain name, but we never get it. The resentment, that anger sometimes is very detrimental to us. How to give that up is not discussed in the Mahabharata, but that's something that we might want to think about. So with that, I will start. Thank you for sharing with us. But what is interesting is uh, the prarabdha or the outcomes of your actions are often seen in the next life. In Karna's case, you see the whatever actions that he took during his lifetime, many of them, the outcome was shown in his present life. For example, leave aside born from uh, a uh, large son and his mother Kunti. I'll tell you a couple of other things. For example, when he lost his armor, it was Indra who came in the disguise to save his son's life, his Arjuna's life. But that he was he knew the fact, but still he maintained that story. If you remember the story where he could not use the powerful mantras that Parshuram had taught. And it came to effect in the Mahabharata war. The story about uh, his wheel of the chariot getting stuck in the ground. There's also a story about he interacting with Mother Earth, where Mother Earth cursed him that you'll 
you'll the, your chariot will get stuck at that particular time within me. I won't support you. There's so many stories that happen in somebody's life, outcome of which is frequently seen in the subsequent life. In Karna's case, it is interesting that many of the things that happen in his present life shown in the actual results in his life, which is very fascinating. Uh, yeah, so yeah. very powerful stories. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Only other thing which I want to emphasize, there's a frequently a confusion about Gotra. There are two kinds of Gotras. One is a family lineage, Kula Gotra, and that's what exactly what uh, the priest asks. But from the philosophical point of view, the Gotra which is correct is Guru Gotra. So it depends upon what lineage of teachers you follow. For example, Sri Krishna and Sudama had the, basically the same Gotra. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that is something to remember. I didn't know that. Good. But what about the, the dilemma that a couple who adopt children face? Is there any, is there any uh, reasonable answer? I, I don't think there's anything written in the scriptures, but I think uh, since we're talking about the temple, that's where most of the time we go to the prayers uh, for the rituals is usually use the Kula Gotra, that's about it. But if you were talking in philosophy, like in our Sunday's discussion, what parampara you follow, that's the keeper. Yeah, yeah. Well, what is the general protocol in the adoption cases? Uh, uh, should the parents let the child know he or she is adopted or let it go? I don't know the answer. I think at the appropriate time, that would be my suggestion. Yeah. Because Karnal should have been told, but he was never. I know. And but the, pretty, the thing is, nobody's perfect, Prasanna. Pardon me? Upcoming, then once you accept that, then everything becomes easier or less difficult. Dr. Kumar, uh, is there a, was there any this conversation between Bhishma and Karna? Bhishma and... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, Bhishma and Karna is kind of a hate-love relationship. Karna never liked Bhishma. Karna always felt that Bhishma... His heart was with the Pandavas and not with the Kauravas. And so he would always belittle him. It, it, there are a number of passages where Bhishma will be extolling the virtues of the Pandavas and Karna would get very angry. And then Karna would say, why are you betraying Duryodhana? Why are you always praising the Pandavas? Don't you have some kind words to say about our own strength? And just at that particular point, we do before the war starts, there was a huge discussion, and Karna gets very angry with Bhishma. And then when Bhishma uh, lays down after he, you know, he has been uh, penetrated with so many arrows that he drops his bow and arrow and his shield. At that particular time, Arjuna helps uh, Bhishma lie down on a bed of arrows and also gets water from the ground by shooting an arrow to the ground. That's all uh, in, the, uh, in the text. Only after that, Karna enters the uh, battlefield with Shalya as a charioteer. And Shalya, as you know, uh, Yudhishthira, a very sly guy, he's a Dharma Raja, but sometimes his actions are questionable because he tells Shalya, you know, by fate, uh, you went towards Kauravas, even though you came to uh, support me. But Duryodhana, by his usual tricks, uh, fooled you, and uh, you agreed to follow the uh, su support Duryodhana. So why don't you be the charioteer for Karna? And one thing I want you to do, try to undermine the self-confidence of Karna by constantly extolling the virtues of Arjuna and by also, also telling him, you're not a good aimer, you're not aiming your arrows correctly, re-aim, re-aim. So it make him angry, make him somehow lose, the self, lose his confidence in himself. 
So this is Yudhishthira's uh, uh, exhortation to Shalya. And Shalya followed it, followed it through. So it is true. Uh, Karna and Bhishma have a number of dialogues in the, in the Mahabharata. And in each, every one of those dialogues, you find some sort of a, uh, a tiff, a resentment on the part of Karna. He never likes uh, Bhishma for that particular reason. There was no love, no love loss between the two. Karna was really uh, an unfortunate individual who was mistreated because of uh, his presumed birth being a Sutaputra. Yeah. For example, every step of the way, like Parshuram's story you shared where he was cursed that he would lose his strength. Uh, Dronacharya would not accept him as a teacher, uh, so as a student. Bhishmacharya would not fight with Karna as his co-commander. Karna had to wait till the time Bhishmacharya fell down. According to some of the stories, uh, even the killing, uh, killing the fish on the ceiling by looking at the image in the water, uh, Karna had done it before Arjuna did. Yeah, I don't know if you remember the story, but nonetheless, uh, Draupadi said, I would not marry any Sutaputra. That's why she was she rejected him. Uh, so he suffered all the way through for being a Sutaputra. I think that is something tragic. But again, you got to remember, when we are born in this human life, we are born with Prarabdha. There are certain curses that we carry with us, which we don't realize. So these instances, which I shared early, they, we could see the result at this particular time. But he carried those negative things on his back when he was born. And I think that's how he suffered all the way through. So Yeah, yeah the, I, I kind of sympathize with him. Uh, every time uh, something bad happens to him, uh, particularly because he's tagged with Sutaputra, it just kind of bothered me. Uh, have we changed? Have we come? Have we gone past that? I am not sure. Even even now we have that. Uh, I don't know if I, I, I shouldn't call it prejudice. It is some kind of a uh, a wrong thinking instead of uh, according the appropriate respect for people for what they have achieved. We seem to be hung up on the lineage, which, which I don't think is proper. Exactly. We can, we can learn from these stories what we should not do in our life. And even, if, even for Kunti, who came to save the life of uh, son Arjuna, all the Pandavas, he granted her permission, but agreed to her request as well in a way. She's mentioned that Arjuna I'm going to kill, who's a direct competitor for me all the way through, but you will still have five sons. Yeah, yeah. So he, he, even though he was fighting for the Kauravas, he did not want to annihilate all the Pandavas because mother came to request that. Yeah. But he said, no, but you could have only five sons that you wanted, and that's what you're going to have. So. Yeah. Venture Pandavas, as they are called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his, his character was very good. I, I kind of liked it. The other character he liked in the Mahabharata uh, was uh, uh, Bhima is an interesting character, uh, very interesting character. And it, I probably should tell you the story uh, of the meeting between Bhima and Anjaneya. Sure. Mm -hmm. From Ego gets in the way all the time. Yeah. Treta Yuga and another one coming from. Advapara Yuga. And that's an interesting conversation. Then there's another one, a conversation between uh, Nagusha, the king serpent, and uh, Yudhishthira. Also a very interesting uh, piece of uh, story in Mahabharata, which is very nice. The one thing I, I, I might want to do uh, when I come back in September is maybe uh, spend a couple of, uh, couple, three lectures on Vishnu Sahasranama. Sure. I've studied that in, in great detail, and I think we can learn a lot from Vishnu Sahasranama. Uh, yeah, I think you can certainly tell the meanings of each of the name and tell the story along with it. It will be very effective. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I've not studied Shiva Sahasranama, even though both of them appear uh, in the Anushasana Parva in Mahabharata. I have not studied uh, Shiva Sahasranama. The two of them that are very popular. Lalita Sahasranama, 
which is on poverty and Vishnu Sahasranama. Uh, hello, I've, I'm really enjoying these Mahabharat stories, yeah. so um, I, I hope there's more to come. Um, I was wondering if I could ask what, what um, the significance of Karna's name um, is. Well, uh, thank wasn't you. It's a, Karna really born, wasn't when Karna was found, he had something in his ears, a piercing that was from the sun god? Yes. They vaguely remember uh, something like Yeah, Kavach Kundal and, uh, yeah. and the armor yeah. and, uh, and the earring. Yeah. Yeah, he had earrings, and I think Surya might have earrings. Right. Kunda Kundala. Yeah. That's how the kid. It came with him when he was born. Yeah. Thank you, Prasanna.